First coffee, then leadership. In today's leadership training video, I'm gonna give you three ways that'll really help you become a better leader. First up, it's super important to define what a leader is. A leader, especially in a post-COVID world, is somebody who has a clear vision and is able to rally her or his community to achieve that goal. The greatest job of a leader, whether that leader is a parent, a CEO, a counselor, is to really find a way to build self-esteem without crossing into delusion. So what that means is, in a business setting, it's super important to remember that you're, you work for your employees. They don't work for you. Your job is to really build your team, provide value, give them space to grow uh, while holding them accountable. So with that out of the way, there's so many leaders and managers who want to be better. And listen to me, don't get me wrong here. Of course, they want to accomplish their own desires, but they want to accomplish them in a way that helps them sleep at night. Nobody's trying to run a dictatorship. I actually fled one from the country that I'm from. So I'm especially mindful of the feelings and needs of the people that I work with, but so many leaders are so confused. They just don't know how to build a business and meet their goals without being a real obstacle to their employees and team members. You know, I've talked to so many leaders and some leaders may have great relationships with their people, but they wanna be better about meeting goals and finding the balance between empathy and ambition. So if either one of those sound like you, or you fall somewhere on the spectrum of those two leadership types, this video is for you. So let's get into it. So I'm gonna give you three tactical methods to become a better leader. Number one, you have to remember this. This is really important. You work for them, they don't work for you. You work for your team, your team does not work for you. And I know I said this in the intro, but the number one thing that you have to remember is that if you're a leader, you work for your team. They don't work for you. So if you're a CEO, it's absolutely ludicrous to expect your employees to work as much as you do. Listen to me, it's your business, right? Of course, your employees are not gonna love it as much as you do. And a lot of life is a them game and entrepreneurship is absolutely no different. So if you wanna be an effective leader, you really have to give, 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 and then ask. The biggest mistake that people make and how come they can't build a scalable business is that they have selfish expectations of their people, of their teams, their direct reports, their employees. So you may be a hard worker. You may have fought to get to where you are, right? You battled a bunch of people. You got the job. You are where you are, but that's it. It's your business, it's not theirs. They have absolutely no reason to be as invested as you are, even if you think you're giving them a reason to be. So you really can't ask an employee to work as hard as you because you believe you compensate them well. Nope, that's the wrong mentality. That's kind of like asking somebody to love your child as much as you do, and it's just not natural. You see what I'm saying? Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Boy, does nobody understand the words that are coming out of your mouth. <laughs> Listen to me. You're gonna have much more successful interactions if you set those expectations and give your team the means to reach them. Now, what does that look like in practice? I'm glad you asked. A lot of leaders have these arbitrary expectations about how new hires should actually perform and act. This is really gonna affect their growth in a super big way. So I just, from experience, I wanna give you two tips to kinda of keep in mind when you start hiring new employees, especially right now for 2021. The first piece of advice I'm gonna give you, and this is something you can do right away, is give trust very easily. You have to give trust a lot easier than anybody else on the face of the planet. To me, it's just faster and you should blindly trust everybody. If they prove themselves to be incapable, however, I'm gonna put restrictions around them and so should you. But I genuinely believe that the phrase, trust is not given, it's earned, is absolutely slow and it's absolutely egotistical. The second point 
that you can use right away is stop comparing your new hires to yourself, okay? This is exactly where every single new leader or even veteran leader gets caught. Sometimes they measure candidates against themselves and they inflate their egos by finding ways for the candidates that actually don't match up. So what happens is, and for this very reason, never hold an employee to the same standard that you hold yourself or that I would hold for myself. So on the contrary, for me, it's always about offense. Listen to me, you shouldn't care that the people that work for you don't perform as well as they should because they're actually freeing up your day. They're freeing up your time. So even if they're not performing at the 100 that you would like them to perform, that's okay because they're allowing you to go on the offense in so many other ways. So if you keep those two things in mind, that will really help you become a better leader because it's gonna train you to really internalize that you work for your people and not the other way around. And then, watch, things are gonna to start to change. Ultimately, these are reminders to be grateful. Number two, stop micromanaging and teach your team how to swim. If you have trouble structuring your business, if you go through rounds and rounds of hiring and then firing, listen to this, okay? If you have trouble finding the right team member or the right person, the problem is you. Let me take that back. The problem may be you. And this may be tough to accept and this may be hard to listen to. And I know good leaders can really handle the truth. So here's a truth bomb. I'm not trying to be impractical, but as I said before, good leaders don't cast judgment on their employees. Good leaders don't yell and scream or try to watch their employees every single move. They're never micromanaging. Good leaders are supportive. Good leaders ask how they can help. Trust me, I've seen it and it looks good and it feels good. So instead of being upset at your employee, right, that's drowning, teach them how to swim. Number three, you gotta build a strong company culture, people. After you've internalized, after you've internalized that you work for them, it's really now time to start establishing what sort of legacy you wanna leave behind. What does it mean for somebody to say that they've worked at your company? What does it mean that's, that says, hey, I worked for Kevin O'Neill or I worked for Rob Rorig? What does that say? It says a lot. It says good leadership. So what do you want it to say on your tombstone? How many people are gonna show up for your funeral? How many people are gonna care? And for that reason, among so many others, I call all my free leadership and sales training the land of milk and honey. Listen to me. The way to build a great culture is not in words that are written on the wall, but in your actions. You see that plaque that you have right there on the wall? That's not what it is. Just because you have it doesn't make you a great leader. You have to make every one of your employees and every one of your team members understand that you care about them more than you want them to care about you. And I know that sounds impossible, but you cannot be crippled by this particular task. Look, it's tough. But if you do it, you're going to build a great culture. And if you don't, every day that you work is going to take you further and further away from that culture that you want so badly. You have to practice this every single day. And it means, literally means, having the courage and not being afraid to fire your top salesperson because he or she is not as nice of a person as you thought they were. They're being a jerk. And it means knowing who your employees are and what drives them and if their needs have changed in 2021 versus last year before COVID actually went down. And it also means promoting and compensating people based on how hard they work, not on how well you know them. A great work culture is one that works for everybody. It really should work when things are easy and it should work when, God forbid, tragedy actually happens. Because the second you slack on your culture is the second you're going to lose. Meritocracy, that's an important word of the day. Bing, bing, bing. As a fellow toasty, a toastmaster, I'm gonna to be adding the word of the week and its meaning, okay? It means a social system, 
society or organization in which people get success or power because of their abilities, not because of their money or social position. The company is a meritocracy. Good work is rewarded with promotions. That's how you use it, okay? So meritocracy is important. Empathy is more important. And knowing the culture that fits you and your employees is the most important thing of all, okay? Remember my words. They mean nothing if you don't listen to them and you don't start internalizing them. So they're gonna become a part of your everyday life. So what do you do now? Go apply this training, share it with a leader that you admire or somebody that you know that's actively trying to become a better leader. And do me a favor, while you're at it, tweet me your biggest takeaways and leave a comment down below on at least one or two big takeaways from this leadership training video. Oh, and of course, remember that perfect practice makes perfect. So go practice, 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 because doing these things yourself are gonna make you a better leader. Hey, if you're on LinkedIn and YouTube, thanks for watching my video experience. If you're listening to my audio experience on iTunes or Spotify or any other podcast platform, please smash that like button and please leave me a comment because your words, they're my oxygen. Listen, I love you so much and I thank you so much for being a part of our Mr. Z nation of great leaders. Asante sana, squash banana. Now go be a great leader, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace, everybody.